Today, we're going to talk about working with UV coordinates in shaders. Let's get started. Before I show you what you can do with UV coordinates in shaders, the first thing that I want to do is show you what UV coordinates are. UV coordinates, also called texture coordinates or just UVs for short, are a convenient way of translating 3D space into 2D. We need to be able to do this because texture maps, uh, like this one on the left, are 2D images, uh, but our models, like this cube here on the right, are three-dimensional. So UV coordinates are the method that we use to define how to wrap 2D images around our 3D meshes. Let's use an orange as an example. It's a 3D object. If we peel the orange carefully, we can keep the peel in one piece and lay it out flat. Now that the peel is flat, it's in 2D space. But if we wrap the peel around the orange again, we've translated that 2D space into 3D. UV coordinates work kind of like that. Each of the vertices in our model, uh, like we can see here on this cube, there's a, a vertex on each of the corners of the cube. And each of those vertices has a position in 3D space as well as 2D space. So now we can apply a texture to our model and the 3D software uses the 2D space UV coordinates to know how that texture should be applied. So here you can see in my UV space view, I've got the top of my cube, the front of my cube, the left and right sides of my cube, the bottom of my cube, and the back of my cube. I can do a few interesting things to these UV coordinates. I can move them around, and you can see that as I move them in 2D space, they also move in 3D space here. So I can pan my UV coordinates left and right and up and down. I can also rotate my UVs. And I can scale my UVs. Now this is interesting. As I scale them larger, it gives the appearance that the texture is getting smaller. And as I scale them smaller in UV space, it gives the appearance that the texture is getting larger. And so, this is a little bit inverted from what you might think. Scaling the UVs down makes the texture scale up and vice versa. And that's important. We're going to take a look at that in a minute when we get into Unreal 5 and Unity. So in this video, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about how to create and apply UV coordinates. That's an art form into itself. And there are a lot of other videos on that topic. But I did want to show you what UV coordinates are so you'll be able to better understand uh, what's going on once we start to mess around with them in our shaders. All right, let's jump into Unreal 5 and Unity and take a look at a couple of examples of what you can do with UV coordinates. All right, so here we are in Unreal and we have a texture sample with our uh, test texture. You can see that it's red over here and green over here. These colors are just to kind of show off the fact that the UV coordinates are progressing from 0 to 1 and then also from 0 to 1 in the vertical as well. Right now I don't have anything plugged into my texture sample, but you can see the texture is still applied to my three-dimensional cube. And that's because the texture sample node by default uses a UV coordinate set 0. You can see how there's this 0 here indicating that the first set or the zero set is the default. So if I take my texture coordinate node, which is bringing in the texture coordinates from the model and plug it into my texture, I get the exact same results as if nothing is plugged in because using this set of texture coordinates just happens by default. So if this socket here is empty, it's going to act as if text chord zero is plugged in. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other examples. I'm going to move my 
graph over here a little bit, and I've got a couple of examples lined up here. The first thing that we're going to do is multiply our texture coordinates by a value. So if I plug this into my UV socket on my texture sample, now you can see that before using my UV coordinates to sample the texture, I've multiplied them by two. And do you remember when we were in 3ds Max a minute ago and I was scaling up the UV coordinates? Well, that's what multiplying the UV coordinates does. I can scale the coordinates up or down before I use them to sample my texture. And in this case, if I multiply by two, you can see that now instead of tiling once across the surface, the texture coordinates are tiling two times because I've multiplied by two. And the effect of that is to make the texture look smaller. And if I change this value to three, now it's gonna be tiling three times and the texture is getting smaller. Now this may be a little bit counterintuitive because as my value here is getting larger, my texture is getting smaller. And so because of that, sometimes when people are scaling UV coordinates, they like to use the divide node instead because watch what happens when I use the divide instead of multiply. So I've got my two here and I'm dividing my texture coordinates by two instead of multiply. And you can see that now my texture has gotten larger. And if I divide by three, it's getting even larger, value of four. So now as my value is going up, the size of my texture is also going up. So you can use a multiply to scale your UV coordinates, but a lot of people like to use divide instead because it's a little more intuitive that your texture is getting bigger as your scale value is also getting bigger. So we learned from this that by multiplying or dividing UV coordinates before sampling our texture, we're able to scale our texture coordinates larger and smaller. All right, let's take a look at what happens when we add values to UV coordinates. I'm just gonna plug this in. You can see right now we're adding a value of zero and obviously adding zero to anything is the same. So you don't get any change here. But if I add a value of one, I don't get any change there either. Actually, we did get a change, but it's not something that you can see because the UV coordinates shifted exactly one unit uh, to the right. And we can't actually see that because it looks exactly the same as it did because my texture is tiled over and over. What we actually need to do is add something like 0 0.1, and now we can see the effects of what adding is doing. So you can see how it shifted my texture up and to the left by one unit. And if I add 0 0.2, now it's shifted up, in the, up and to the left by two units. And as my number gets larger, the texture is shifting up and to the left. So effectively, I'm panning my texture or scrolling the texture. So adding is moving the texture coordinates around on the surface. Uh, I'm not scaling them like multiply and divide does. I'm just moving them around and that's what add does. And interestingly, subtract does the same thing. It just moves it in the opposite direction. Now, if I only wanted it to uh, move in one dimension and not the other dimension, I could use a VEC2 value like this. This constant value has two channels. I'm just gonna move my 0.3 over and add this value here that has two different channels. And if I add zero to the U coordinate, but if I add 0.1 to the V coordinate, now you can see it's only moving horizontally and I'm adding zero to it's only moving vertically and I'm adding zero to the horizontal dimension so it's not moving in that dimension so I can control which direction the coordinates move uh, by which of these has a zero and which has a, a value all right so multiply and divide scale the coordinates add and subtract moves the coordinates around and I have one more example here. Here I'm adding time 
to my texture coordinates. So if I plug this in, now you can see that my texture coordinates are actually scrolling over time because as time goes on, I'm adding a higher and higher value of time to my texture coordinates. And that's how I can achieve animated texture coordinate effects if I introduce this value of time. Now, if I want my time to go slower or faster, I can either add another multiply here and let's multiply it by a value of like uh, 0 0.2, for example. So I multiply time by 0 0.2 and then I add that to my texture coordinates and that's going to make it scroll or pan the texture coordinates uh, just a bit slower because I've slowed my time down with this multiply of two. Okay, so we can scale with multiply and divide. We can move the texture coordinates around with add, and we can animate the texture coordinates by adding a value of time. I could also animate the scale of my texture coordinates. If I were to take this time multiplied by 0 0.2 and then multiply them by the texture coordinates, let's see what happens there. All right, something pretty weird. My texture coordinates got really, really small, and that's because this value of time is kind of a large number. It's much larger than the three or the four value that I'm multiplying here. And so I need to do something to, uh, to get this under control. What I'm gonna do is add a sine node in here. So I'm going to multiply my texture coordinates by the sine of time. And we'll plug that in and see what happens here. Now you can see the value scales up really big and then goes back and, and gets small. And that's because sine creates a wave. No matter how high my time value gets, um, sine will create a wave somewhere in between negative uh, one and one. So now you can see I've got this animated effect of my texture coordinates scaling up large and then getting small again. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's switch over to Unity and take a look at the same thing. All right, so here we are in Unity and you can see that I have my texture sample plugged into the base color and also the emission socket of my master stack. And right now I don't have any texture coordinates plugged in. I'm just using the default UV zero here. And so I get my cube just the same as I did in Unreal 5. And if I plug in my UV coordinates here, just the same as I did in Unreal 5, nothing is gonna happen there because the default UVs going into my texture sample are the same as adding the UVs from channel zero. All right, just the same as we did before, if I multiply my texture coordinates by two, they're gonna get smaller and I'll actually tile the texture twice or I could tile it three times or four times, as many times as I want. And multiplying makes the texture coordinate get smaller as the value goes higher, but dividing makes the texture coordinate get larger as the value goes higher. All right. Okay, and here if I add to my texture coordinates, I'm gonna add 0 0.1. You can see that they scoot over just a little bit. Add 0 0.2. Now notice there's a bit of a difference here between Unreal and Unity. In Unreal, as I added to the texture coordinates, they were moving up and to the left. And in Unity, as I add to the texture coordinates, they're moving down and to the right. So that's an interesting distinction to keep track of. And so if you're translating shaders between the two engines, you'll want to compensate for that and uh, make the adjustments required uh, so that those movements are consistent. Okay, and here again, you can see that my UV coordinates are being added to time. So if we plug this in, we'll get our UV coordinates scrolling uh, down and to the left just like we did when we added 0 0.2, except for now they're animated. And just like we got in Unreal, if I plug time into multiply, 
and then plug multiply into the texture, you can see that I, I get a really, really high scaled up value. And so what I actually need to do is add a sine node so that I'm doing the sine of time. And so here we're getting our texture co coordinates scrolling back and forth. But if we take the sine of time and we multiply it by our UV coordinates, like we did in Unreal, then we can get our UV coordinates scaling large and then going back small. So cool, I've showed you lots of ways of manipulating UV coordinates. Now, I made another video a while ago that shows some additional really cool things that you can do uh, to manipulate UV coordinates. And so I really wanna recommend that you guys check that one out. Uh, I show how to use a texture to not only animate the UV coordinates, but in, animate individual pixels of the UV coordinates differently than others to create a distortion effect. I'll put the link to that video right here. And I definitely want to recommend that you check that one out because it's going to take your understanding of UV coordinates and how to uh, play with them to a whole new level. And not only that, it'll show you how to make a, a really cool effect. Uh, so you can do texture coordinate distortion uh, with this particular uh, video that I made a while back. So go ahead and check that one out. All right, that brings us to the end of the tutorial for today. Next week, we're gonna go over input vectors. So we're gonna talk about the camera vector, uh, the normal, uh, and some of the other input vectors that you can use and what you can do with those. So I hope everybody comes back next week for that one. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.